Christian leaders in Sultan Kaduna and the Sultan Kaduna People's Union, Sukapu, shunned a summit to restore peace in the crisis torn part of Kaduna State. However, the peace summit went on as scheduled in Kafanchan, the headquarters of Jammu's local government area, with over 100 participants from across religious groups. Chairman of the Peace and Reconciliation Committee on Sultan Kaduna Crisis and former Chief of Defense Staff, General Martin Aguay, urged Governor Nasser El Fai to do everything humanly possible to ensure that his administration found lasting solution to the over 40 years crisis. The summit, organized by Friends of Sultan Kaduna, in collaboration with the Nigerian Christian Pilgrims Commission and CPC, has de-escalating violence in Southern Kaduna as its team. But the Southern Kaduna leaders under the ages of the Southern Kaduna Christian Leaders Association said they stayed away from the peace meeting because some key stakeholders were left out. Also, the Kaduna State Chapter of the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, said it did not trust the organizers of the event, while Sokapu asked that it should be rescheduled. Joining us now is Francis Koza, former chairman, Atiap Community Development, Lagos branch. Also joining us is Reverend Joseph Hyab, Khan chairman in Kaduna. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us um, on the program this morning. Now, uh, let me start with you, um, uh, Mr. Hayab. What is your reaction to this boycott, though everyone is on the part of peace? Well, uh, if you call it by court, it's probably just considering who is, what is going on and what is being done. There are many NGOs that are actively doing peace activities at the moment in Southern Kaduna. We are working with them. Personally, I attended some of the meetings. I have been in touch with the Miyeti Allah leadership of Kaduna State and also some of the Hausa community leadership. So many groups are working in Southern Kaduna. But this particular meeting that probably is uh, becoming interesting was arranged by people who call themselves friends of Southern Kaduna. If you call yourself friends of Southern Kaduna, then we need to know who are you. I have a letter right in front of me and I can send it to you. They first of all wrote us a letter having a government house logo telling us about the meeting. And all they did was to say, I, Reverend Joseph Hayab, I'm invited to say an opening prayer. Then we say, wait a minute, you've not even discussed with us. What are you going to do? I'm saying I should come and just say an opening prayer in a crisis that I've been in the forefront of speaking about. Please explain so that we know what the program is all about. They came to my office and apologized that it was an overzealous staff of their office who sent the letter and used a wrong letter headed paper. And then they changed and sent this new letter. Now with the Southern Kaduna Peace Summit as the letter headed. And it was also signed by the same person who signed the first letter. In this one, they now changed the conversation and said, no, they are asking Khan to nominate two people to participate in the peace process of Southern Kaduna, which Khan has been actually actively involved. So we find some of these correspondences a little bit suspicious. And we simply said, we have questioned about what this thing is all about. Can we talk before we go to the round table? I, Reverend Hayab, apart from being Khan chairman, I'm an active peace worker. Uh, Koza, who is listening to you, will know that I have a history, I have a record of active involvement in interfaith dialogue for over two decades in Kaduna. I worked very tirelessly to bring about the restoration of peace from 2002 November to 2011. I work with many people and their support. So I am not a bigot, I don't segregate, but I just find this activity, particularly this one, suspicious. On Saturday alone, I was part of a team that met with 70 youths in Southern Kaduna. So if another group comes and is meeting with 100 people, it doesn't make any difference. The only thing is that as a responsible organization, CAN will not just participate in every meeting just because it is a name meeting of peace. We have to understand what is the agenda, who are they bringing to the table, what is the kind of conversation do they want us to bring. Because I can say this with due respect, that what we saw was just a TV show, okay, bring key names, show them on TV and say they have come to me to discuss peace. We think there is more to it. 
If tomorrow a group that knows what she's doing call me to Southern Kaduna, I am moving immediately since I just All came right. back on Saturday. So we keep going and we are keep we are talking. But this particular group, we find the activity a little bit not clear, and we just simply ask them go back and do what is right so that we'll have a summit that is all inclusive. All right, uh, uh, Mr. So Hayab, I, I will come back to you. The real summit, no, it is not. There was a mix-up. You can see these letters show that they themselves were not prepared. They were confused. Mr. How Hayab, I will approach? come back to you. Um, let's bring in Mr. Koza to get his uh, two cents on this particular um, boycott, and then we will proceed with the conversation. Mr. Koza, can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. What's your reaction to the boycott? Well, for me, as far as I'm concerned, the issue of peace in southern Kaduna is very important and is very crucial. And that whatever sacrifice anybody will make to ensure that peace is returned to our people should be done. Whatever meetings that is called, people should give each other the benefits of the doubt. As many meetings as possible can be called. And when you start creating suspicion, it doesn't augur well. First of all, I believe that everybody should be given the benefit of the doubt that he or she has good intention to call the meeting. Even if it is government that calls the meeting, you go and listen. Nobody is going to force things into your, into your heart, your throat. All you notice that as people who are very conversant with the issues in Southern Kaduna, once a meeting is called by anybody, we don't know where the solution lies. You go there, you make your own contribution. Let us stop suspecting one another. Let us try to trust one another. But to the contrary, is proof. This meeting is chaired by a very pronounced Christian leader, the executive secretary of the National Christian Pilgrim Board. The man has been in South Africa for some time. He has been talking with people. He has been consulting with people. And there are also very senior citizens of Southern Kaduna that are supporting him to hold this meeting. I feel strongly that any organization, any association, any person that is invited to that meeting ought to have gone to the meeting, listened to them, make his own contributions, and perhaps, who knows, a solution could be found to our protracted crisis in Southern Kaduna. I feel strongly that it is not proper, it is not right for you to suspect somebody Nearly because there was an error. People are coming and tell them there's an error in, in those who can make mistakes. Anybody can make mistakes. No, no, always is perfect. It's only God that is perfect. So if somebody comes and says, Oh, I'm sorry, I've made a mistake, please accept the mistake and let's forge ahead. Not to rely and compound on that issue and then go ahead and say, You are, you are suspecting it, you will not attend. I think it's not fair to All start right. as a people and the people can is leading. Uh, Mr. Koza, you, you raised a number of issues uh, encapsulating some of the questions I wanted to ask uh, Mr. Hayab. And I'll just go and ask you, you, you listened to Mr. Koza make his uh, submission on the issue of, you know, it's about peace. Sultan Kaduna needs peace. So why are you um, more concerned about the maybe the latest that are being sent other than the purpose of the meeting, if peace, you, you said you, you want dialogue. Is this not dialogue? Well, okay, let me quickly give you a quick two, three responses. One, the man you are talking in question that called the meeting, if you don't know, probably you are not familiar with the record. I am the vice chairman of CAN in northern Nigeria, and the man supposed to be, Bush is my chairman. So you can see that I'm actually in the leadership. So what I know, you probably don't know. If you talk about suspicion, I will say this for the purpose of education of our viewers. You appearing on TV, you are saying that you are using an address of or a, a title of, of, of Lagos. And you know very well you are a government appointee of Aerofi. So you should just expect that your answer will be to defend your boss, to defend the government you are signing. You are not even trying to tell people what exactly is your office at the moment. You are using an address that you know is not yours. Probably just to give people an impression you are just a neutral stakeholder, but you are a government appointee serving Governor Yoruba. Um, so Mr. naturally, I will expect the answers that I got from you. Mr. Hayab. So nothing is going to be strange, but let me say this. If I were in Kofenchan on Saturday, and I've been going to Kofenchan to attend many meetings, but this particular meeting, as I have stated, 
that they say they are friends of Southern Kaduna. If you say you are my friend, ordinarily I should know you. Ordinarily I should talk with you. We don't want to see, we, we've been dealing with this issue of violence going forward and um, forth. Uh, uh, Mr. Yahab, let me understand you. you. Mr. Yahab, let me uh, understand you. You said you, you don't know the people that conveyed this meeting. But you just said that the person Listen is the chairman. Uh, please help us understand. NGO came and called Southern Kaduna people and they met and they did a billboard everywhere that they have signed peace agreement. But after a few weeks, the peace agreement didn't work. That is the lesson we are learning that if we want to go into peace understanding, let's lay a good foundation. Simple, that's what we are saying. Uh, so I trust them. I'm not, we are not creating this official. They created it. And from this conversation, you are adding to the suspicion because you came in as, a, as, as, as someone serving the government, but you are giving a different identity, which you know I know. So how can we trust this kind of conversation? Well, honesty is not involved in it. Um, Mr. Koza, could you quickly respond to that uh, before we move on? Thank you very much. First of all, there's nothing wrong in serving the government. I, I, no, I there's yes, nothing wrong, actually. Listen, yeah. listen now, let me finish. Sir. There's nothing wrong whatsoever in serving this government. There's no doubt about it. We are all bona fide citizens of Southern Kaduna. And, and and let me tell you, I was I was a former ACDA chairman in, 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 in Lagos State. There's nothing wrong with that. What we are simply saying is that let us forget about technicalities. Let us look at the issues. Let us look at the issues. Yeah, this meeting is summoned not by government, is summoned by the president of the National Christian Polar Board. And secondly, Credible and senior citizens of Southern Kaduna are involved in organizing this meeting. Why can't you just go to the meeting, listen to it, contribute, make your own contribution, and it moves ahead? There's nothing wrong. LFI is the chief executive of South Risk of the state. He has a right, he has he can be heard, he can organize meetings to not solve the problems. There's nothing wrong with it. Why is it that you are just taking a position as if LFI is an enemy to Southern Kaduna? Let us sit down and talk. If there's time for us to talk, let us talk. Let us stop the suspicion. It's better for us to judge up than to war war. Mr. We have made a clear that you cannot listen to people, that you cannot talk to these people. You are a leader of that. You can talk to everybody. Listen to him and listen to them and make your own contribution. That's the point. Whether you are appointees or not, whether well, well, once you have an interest in the corona, I think it should be interesting attend the meeting. To All right, uh, Mr. Koza, let, let me go back to Mr. Yahab. Mr. Yahab, um, I, I didn't quite get your response to the first part of my question about knowing or not knowing the organizers of this uh, current peace uh, meeting. Uh, he mentioned that it is the Christian Pilgrims Board. Is this body not known to you? Thank you. Actually, it's not the Christian. You see, these are the mixed up. I did introduce and I said to Koza that I am the vice chairman of Khan in Northern Nigeria and the chairman of Khan Kaduna State. So if there's anything that is for Christians, you should know that I'm supposed to know. But if I have reservation, then something is fishy. I, if we attend more than 20, 30 different group meetings, but we take this one, wait a minute, let's understand what you are up to. It is also just fair that you reason and discuss with us what you are up to, what is your program all about. That's why I am asking questions and I added this side, I said, to show the complication of this. Koza, who is speaking with me about this and is passionate as if we are not doing dialogue, he's the only one doing dialogue, he's a government appointee, so he has to just speak for government. But if you come from the angle I'm coming, Koza, you will understand that as an association, we have so many groups. To call Khan and say Khan in Kaduna State should come to a peace dialogue of Kaduna State with just two people. Co Gentlemen, let's be honest. You are okay, not so being here to us. Neither do you even understand the issues we are talking about. Okay, Before help us, meeting, um, Mr. Yahab. And know from us Mr. what Yahab. is going on. Mr. When Yahab. we tell you our mind, our feelings, then you say, okay, can we take this to your point further in a summit? You've not even sat with us. You've not discussed with us. You are writing us just later. Others are doing a good job. And we are participating. All and right. we will continue to participate. Uh, Mr. Yahab, if you will just let me interject and follow up with what you were saying. The NCPC. Mr. Hayab. NCPC. NCPC is not expert in conflict management. 
Mr. Yahab, I mean, when you when you try and allow me interject sometimes, so I don't look like I'm interrupting you all the time, please. Um, I was going to ask, based on what you said, you said um, you want to participate. Um, my question is, shouldn't if people are calling meetings and you're unhappy with the way, because the situation there is really important. Can you hear me? I can talk to everybody. Mr. Hayab, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, I'm trying to say, if you are unhappy with the way meetings are being set up, um, I mean, in this particular one, um, shouldn't can be maybe considering yeah. doing um, a dialogue to invite other parties as well? I can say to you that meetings, series of meetings, uh, is just for purpose of education. Uh, Bashir so far came with his team. I was there. The former chairman of National Heart Commission, who is also a Muslim, has come with his team. I was also there. There are many groups that we are discussing. But this one, we just felt there was no consultation. Can you arrange it so that we have a proper dialogue? If you want to go to a dialogue table, I want to know those I'm dialoguing with. Because there are mixed up about our issue. There are bandit, there's banditry, there is headsmen. Are we dialoguing with the bandits or with the headsmen? So we just ask them questions. But I think they were not ready for the question. They want to quickly jump and satisfy the bidding of whoever sent them for this particular meeting. You cannot come to tell me you want to correct the roof of my house without asking me the owner of the house, how do we do about it? So these are just the things we wanted clarity. And if we can attend dialogue organized by people who do not even have office, then we can jump to attend dialogue organized by people who have office. But what we are afraid is that let our dialogue not be coming together to be seen on television, coming together to be given envelopes, coming together to be kept in hotels. Let it be dialogue about the issue so that once we achieve peace, it will be a sustainable, lasting, permanent, and peace that can help us going forward. We don't want to pretend because the pretense is why we are here, where we are today. I earlier said that there was a time, humanitarian dialogue, even in Yozengong Katab, put on big billboards that peace has been restored. In less than three weeks, killing came back. We want to learn from that lesson and avoid it and do what is right. You will agree with me if you don't know, we know, that after the peace summit that was done in Zangong Katab, a man who had been away from home, run back home to start farming, but one night, gunmen came and he couldn't go back to where he used to stay and slept in his house. They killed him and killed three of his children. That story is being hidden so that no one will say, oh, there was a peace agreement, but things are not working. So we don't want such kind of peace agreement. We want peace agreement that goes to the heart. The Bible um, says, blessed are the peacemakers, not peacekeepers. I, I want peacemaking from the heart. All right, Mr. Yahab, let me, let me, I mean, off the top of my head, we, I've heard quite a number of summits, peace dialogue, um, uh, meeting, That's elders right. being held on this particular uh, matter. I mean, when are we going to get to a resolution? We've been having all of these meetings, but it, like you said, it doesn't seem to hold a lot of water. So what kind of convergence are you looking at? Who are the parties that should be in a meeting that could really um, address this, uh, what we said, the mess-up of issues? Well, you see, we talk too much about names of groups, but let's talk about the victims. Have we really dialogue with the victims? Let's talk about those who lost husbands, widows. Let's talk about the youths. Even the youths, sometimes you, the, the groups that come around, we just call some groups of youths that want to sing praises, not youths who are in, really interested in the matter. Then even the elders you say are in the meeting. I do respect all my elders and I'm actually happy about them. Let's talk about the elders that do come. Are they from really the crisis area? Are they involved in the crisis issue? Let's talk about even the other balance, the Christians, the Muslim, the Hausa, the Fulanis, the traditional rulers. Put everybody in the same pedestal and talk. I want to see people who were victims coming out to show how this thing affects them. And someone who is there empathizing with them, knowing where they are coming from. But it just brings a group of people. Uh, I said I've been involved in peace work for a long time. 
And one of the mistakes I've seen many groups that are doing peace work are doing is they are doing this big hotel peace work where you carry some big names, take them in a hotel, you have enough money, pay TVC or pay channels or pay NTA and AIT. They beam it and say there was a peace meeting in Southern Kaduna or in Kaduna State or anywhere. If you recall very well, on the 20th or 22nd of, or on the 20th of August, 2002, we had a big ceremony in Kaduna in Mutala Square that we signed a peace agreement. But on the 20th and 22nd of November, there was a Miss World Beauty pageant crisis and over thousands of people were killed. Why? Because we have always rushed into these meetings without first looking at what are the issues. So I want to see it a broader way of consultation, a broader way of involvement, and looking at the issue, not the Jamboree ceremony. I will be, I will be guilty to attend a meeting, sit in a hotel, sign and collect money, and two days later, people are being killed. Uh, Mr. Koza, I mind? will come back to you. I will come back to you, but I, I need Mr. Hayab to... Um... Uh, you said the people. Uh, you said you don't want to mention groups, but we need to start from somewhere. Who should be in charge of this? The state government, or is it the Christian organization, or is it the community leaders? Who should be bringing these people together? Because the issue seems complicated and hydra headed. The, fact is that the state government should be in the lead. Has the state government ever called us to a meeting and we failed to come? No. I was even a guest speaker at his wife's event just two weeks ago. So once the state got, I have an issue in my house and I'm the father. And I feel as a father, I cannot talk to my son. I cannot talk to my wife. I cannot talk to my uh, nephew or talk to my relations for us to talk about the issue. And I bring, oh, I just begin to lobby some interests that do not even understand the issue to make a jamboree of the issue. I think that is not right. As a father, I will call my son. What is wrong? Why are we having issues in this house? I'll call my wife and say, why are we having issues in this house? Ask your governor whether he has tried, or our governor, whether he has tried that and we refuse. As Khan chairman, the governor knows that I am not against him. The fact is that I defend him anywhere I go because I pray for him and I want him to succeed. And I have always stand with him. But when it comes to the issue of killing of innocent citizens, I don't go, I'm not going to clap for a failure. Once there's a All failure, right, Let, let's bring in Mr. Koza so now. We can then find a way out. So the governor has never even tried to call. The fact is that this kind of interest, he tells them that he's not going to sit with Khan, he's not going to sit with Sukapu, he's not going to sit with our elders. He said that elders of Southern Kaduna are enveloped people. Okay, uh, Mr. Hayab, let's bring in Mr. Koza. Let's let him have some talk time as well, please. Um, Mr. Koza. What is your assessment? Because you are in government as well as a, a, you know, a, a member of the community. What is your assessment of the handling of these matters um, for a while now by the government, both at the federal and the state level? Yeah, well, the federal government... To a large extent, is only no. The, the question is actually to Mr. Koza, please. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Hello. Yes. Come again. Yes. Um, I, I'm asking you, since you are a member of the uh, community, an indigenous of Kaduna, as well as you know part of government, I want to ask you your assessment of uh, the way the federal and state government have been handling uh, these matters. Well, first of all, let me say this that security is the business of everybody. It's not the exclusive business of government. That is number one. Yes, I know that the primary responsibility of government is to secure lives and property. But at the same time, we should also come to terms that security is the business of everybody. And that informed why we as a chiefdom the ATAP children felt that, look, let us try to have a homegrown solution to the challenges that we are having as a children. And we have met with the stakeholders and the children. We have discussed and we have come to terms. We are not saying that whatever we have agreed upon, that there are not tech colonists, that there are people who don't like peace, that they are going to infringe on. But we are taking steps. And that's why I'm forming Mr. my brother Haya. Even as chairman of CAN, irrespective of who calls the meeting, I feel strongly, and I'm convinced strongly, whether it is called by government, whether it's called by agent of government, whosoever called the meeting, once it is issues that relates to 
issues of security in Southern Kaduna. Give the people the benefit of the doubt. Go to attend the meeting. Hear them out. Listen to them. Make their contributions. More so that you said you have attended meetings, several meetings with several groups. What is special that you not attend the meeting with this group? What is your fears? If they give you a brown envelope, I don't want to collect. Don't collect. Uh, Mr. Koza, I, 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 well, I, uh, I think you've talked about this particular uh, part of the question earlier. You've addressed uh, Mr. Yahab and asked that um, he attend the meeting. What I'm asking you is your assessment of the way this matter is being treated and going forward, what would be a better approach to get the right people together and have these very important conversations? Well, just like I said, I said the way to approach this issue is that look, every community, every community in Southern Carolina should be conscious of their responsibility to secure their environment. If government sent all the soldiers in Southern Carolina and the people are not willing to live in peace, there will not be peace. There will be peace. So my take is that let us as a people resolve to live in peace. Let us as a people work for peace. And whatever is coming from outside will supplement our efforts and peace will be everywhere. I believe strongly, I believe strongly that all of us have a stake in the peace of Southern Carolina. And all of us should go back to our own localities, develop something, evolve something, so that everybody will be at peace. And that is what we are doing, even in our children. I want to emphasize that because it is very important. We realize the fact that we as a children should be able to come down, to come together and discuss issues and arrive at a solution. And I believe if other children does that, the whole of Sarah can now do this. When I have said we have to hold a general meeting for everybody to attend, how would we organize that meeting? I have, as a person, I see ever called a meeting as chairman of God in Sarah Kanda. Yes, they have prayed. They have prayed. They took one month to pray. They prayed. But it is now time for us to walk the talk. Because my Bible tells me that faith without work is dead. When you go and pray and pray and pray, and you don't go back home to address the issues, to talk to the communities, you are saying, we as a people, we have gone to be the victims of this crisis. We have discussed with them. His Royal Highness the Guatia went to meet the people who were disturbed, who were killed, their brothers and sisters, their born properties. As I have done that, we have discussed with these people. We have discussed with them, and we feel we should find a way out to solve this problem. So nobody has a monopoly or a solution to the problem of Southern Carolina. That's the point we're making. Nobody has a monopoly, irrespective of who you are, irrespective of your position, irrespective of the post you are having. You don't have a monopoly of the solution to the crisis. All, All right. We all should join us together and work. And uh, Mr. Koza, I the opinion that in respect of who called the meeting, I have should have been there to listen to all right. contribution. Mr. Koza, thank you very much uh, for your contribution thus far. We'll just um, uh, try and wrap things up in 30 seconds, if you can, Mr. Yahab. Um, what is one way off the top of your head that we can begin to seem like we're starting the process of moving forward in dialogue? We keep the dialogue open. We talk honestly to one another. If because I say, what have I done? If I were in Zonkwa, in Kapenshan, what was I doing? Dialoguing. It is even there on the news. You read it, but because of what your interest, you want to protect, you want to present as if I've not gone there. I'm speaking with you. The caption is, I'm recruiting you to be peace ambassadors, to walk, never to allow bandits divide us. And you know very well that the issue has also banditry. Have you seen the bandits? Have you spoken to the bandits? Bandits can only be addressed by security of government. And that's why we are challenging government to ensure that they secure the people. Then we will dialogue with our neighbors so that bandits will not divide us with our neighbors. But when we play game with an issue, no one is thinking of monopoly. We are simply saying be honest in the dialogue. Don't right. use the dialogue for something else. And Antia is just one community out of many communities. Don't forget, Java local government where I come from. Do you have history of violence there? You know, we are one of the groups that have shown example of togetherness. But All right. we still have challenge. But when we talk about the entire Southern Kaduna, don't isolate Katap as if Katap is alone in this struggle. All it right, is the Mr. Whole yeah. that we are talking about that we want to ensure that they live in peace. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your time. And we no continue best. to hope that dialogue will find us and there will be peace in Southern Kaduna. Thank you again.